Are you happy? God is good. And all the time. Amen, amen, amen. Just take a moment. Just worship Him as you lift your hands. Close your eyes. Forget about yourself. And put all the focus on Him. By just loving Him. That's right. Just worship Him. Come on, let's glorify Him. Let's honor Him. And Holy Spirit, we say good morning. We say welcome. We honor Your presence. We honor Your voice. We honor Your gifts. We thank You for the equipping of the saints. We thank You for the word ministry this morning. Thank You for speaking to us. Thank you for teaching us, Holy Spirit. You are the greatest teacher there is. And as we open our hearts and as we open our minds, we pray that you will come and transform us. Change us from the inside out. It is our desire to be like you, Jesus. It is our desire to be Christ-like this morning. And we give you the praise. I thank you for your people. I bless them. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Come on, let's give him praise. You can take your seat. What about my prayers? What about it? It's very relevant. Because let me tell you something. Every person here this morning, every person listening to me right now, need God to answer his prayers. We all have one thing in common this morning. What is that? Prayers. Did you get that? You can even differ from your family. You can even differ from friends and neighbors. And, but we have one thing in common. We all need God to answer our prayers. Now think about this. doesn't matter where you go. I've been all around the world. People are praying this morning and say, Oh God, have mercy. Answer my prayers. So please follow this series. Make sure that you've listened to all the parts. In part one I've shown you. That our prayers are like incense. It is a lovely smell. A beautiful smell. For the Lord. Every time when his people are praying. The Bible says it's like incense. And even his throne room is filled with this wonderful incense this morning i want to show you something else what about my praise i really believe that this teaching will bring a hunger in your heart to pray it will bring a desire to pray even more it will motivate you it will teach you concerning prayer what about my prayers. Let's read Second Kings chapter 20, only the first five verses. You can follow on the board. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. Hmm, that's not such a nice word to get. Now I want to show you what this guy did after he got this word. So the prophet said, you're going to die, you will not recover. And then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And he says, Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully 
and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. This is profound. And before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day, this is the sign. On the third day, from now you will go up to the temple of the Lord. How many of you really need God to answer your prayers? How many of you need a breakthrough? Come on, in your own body, in your own finances, in your business, in your family. How many of you are praying for a child this morning? How many of you are praying, come on, for a family member to get saved? How many of you are praying that God will have mercy on South Africa this morning? Now in this wonderful passage, it is so clear to me that God loves to answer prayer. I mean, just think about this now. In a moment of time, God answered this king's prayer. I mean, he got this negative message. It's not a nice message when the prophet comes up to you and says, listen, thus saith the Lord, you are going to die. Get your house in order. You will not recover. Imagine you receive a word like that. But this is wonderful how he reacted. And I want to share this revelation that I got. He didn't blame God for anything. He didn't say any negative word. Are you all with me? He didn't blame nobody else. The Bible says after he got this word, please remember now the Bible says that this man was ill. He was at the point of death anyway. But I can tell you, you don't need to be a prophet to know that he was praying about his health as the king of Israel. He was surely praying, Lord, please heal me, have mercy on me. The Bible says he was at the point of death. And then the prophet came. And in the Old Testament, God spoke primarily through the prophet. And this is the word of the Lord. And then this man, after he got this word, he didn't blame God. Why must I receive now a word like this? He's already sick. But the Bible says he turned his face to the wall. Now some of you don't know, but this is really symbolic of humbling yourself. Because when you go to to, to Jerusalem, there's a wall. They call it the, the wall of prayer. How many of you heard about that wall of prayer? Or s you've seen some pictures. We've been there. And those Jews are turning their faces towards the wall. And they are praying. They are even moving their bodies. You will never see a Jew pray like this. Standing still, like some of you. You will never see a Jew praise God by just standing still. He will always move his body. Even at the airport, I've seen it numerous times. He's always busy reading the law and praying, and he's always making moves. Why? It's like an offering unto God. He believes as he moves, it's like a really a move offering unto God. A wave offering. He will never stand still. So the Jews will, will go to that wall of prayer and move and pray the whole day. It's actually a fantastic sight to see. Now Hezekiah 
turned to the wall. Not that wall, but maybe in his, in his palace or in his office. Because he knows he has to humble himself right now because he needs a miracle. Because God has spoken through the prophet, you're about to die and you shall not recover. And then he said, Lord, in my own words, have mercy. He says here, remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. And what is so profound here is, is that God answered this man's prayer within a couple of minutes. Because the Bible says that the prophet, he wasn't even at the middle court, wherever that was. It was like a big building, a big palace. He wasn't even at the middle court. It's like, I'm not even out of the, the gate here at our premises. And then the word came to him again and says, turn around and go to King Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, and tell him now, thus say of the Lord, I have heard his prayers. I have seen his tears. Come on, grab it. Take it with everything in you. Let me prophesy over you. God is about to answer your prayers. Come on, God sees your tears. Can you say amen? Isn't this phenomenal? But let me, let me color this in for you. I can do this well. Let me give you revelation on this. Most people, when they receive a negative word, start blaming God. Start blaming the church. They even blame the voice who gives them the word. Playing the blame game. Most people will always, you know, criticize other people. Or like the friends of Job. Trying to tell him, yeah, but it's because you are doing this or you are doing that. You know, they, you, you, you want to find fault in somebody. When somebody is sick, you, you just want to tell them, listen, it's because this and it's because that. You don't even have a revelation, but you want to be negative about it. Until you get sick. Until you have a crisis in your house then you will get a different perspective then you will also start crying out and say God just have mercy on me have mercy on my family have mercy on my house until your child becomes sick hmm? Then you will start crying like Hezekiah. You will start humbling yourself before him. You will then also turn to the wall. And say, God, please remember that I've walked with you. Please have mercy. This morning I'm here to encourage you to never stop praying. Because God can answer your prayer. Come on. Immediately. God can answer your prayer in a moment of time. Can you say amen? God loves to answer prayer. And the devil knows it. That's why he wants you to stop praying. That's why he wants you to become negative. That's why he loves it when Christians become critical. Because then you don't pray. People who have time to criticize other people, they don't pray. People who are really praying don't have time to criticize other people. You're too busy praying. Because you are focused on what he wants to do. That was good. On what he wants to say. 
So this is a remarkable story about prayer. What about my prayers? God can answer your prayer like this. Sometimes it takes time. And that's a series for another day when we are waiting for these answers. We should continue to pray by faith. We should continue, come on, to pray with patience. And sometimes that's not easy. How many of you can, can, can be honest with me? Sometimes it's not easy to wait. Many of us, we don't like to wait. Most people don't like to wait. Some of you will react just now. I know and I know. We like quick fixes. We like quick answers. You see? We love drive throughs like KFC. We love quick service. Hmm? Sometimes God answers like this in a moment with Hezekiah. I have a desire and a prayer in my heart that God will answer all our people's prayer like this. Can you come in agreement with me? As you pray about your own crisis, about your own healing that you need, about your own breakthrough like Hezekiah, Please remember other people as well when you pray. How many of you really need your own house? Come on, lift your hands. Just look at this. Now let me give you a godly word of wisdom. Start praying like never before for other people who need houses. Mm. Henry, that was a great point. Wow. How many of you are trusting God for your own vehicle? Come on, let me see. Look at this. But you just pray most of the time, please, me, 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 and nothing happens. Pray for other people who are praying for their own vehicle. How many of you are praying that God will save your family? Come on, your children. Start praying for other families. Start praying for other parents who are crying before God for the salvation of their own kids. I'm giving you a tip on prayer. What you sow, you reap. Prayer is not a selfish thing. That's why many people don't see breakthrough in prayer. Jesus is praying, in fact, he's praying right now for his church. The Bible is mentioning the fact that this Hezekiah was praying, he humbled himself, he was praying, he didn't blame God, he didn't blame the prophet, he was turning his face towards the wall and started doing what? Praying and weeping. And let me just encourage you. <clears throat> Sometimes you don't even have words, but you have a lot of tears. Come on. And let me bless you this morning by this, by this wonderful word. Those tears are also prayers. As you pray, allow those tears to fall on the feet of the Lord Jesus. Don't put the focus on yourself, but put the focus on Him as you pray, as you are weeping. And the Bible says, as we sow with tears, we shall reap with what? Joy. I pray that God will come through for you like He did with Hezekiah. That your own family will be astonished, come on, that your own friends and family and neighbors will say, wow, it's only God. Now look at this, Psalms 56, please. Verse 8 in the New Living Translation says, you keep track of all my sorrows. 
You have collected all my tears in your bottle. Look at me. God doesn't even miss one tear. Some of you, you will get excited, I know, later. I know. Imagine you get to heaven. How many of you imagining you go to heaven? Only two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time. Try to lift your hand. It's really not difficult. How many of you are imagining this morning? That you're on your way to heaven. Oh. So you should take your family and friends with you. Not going alone. It's like prayer. It's not a selfish thing. When you come to church, invite your family. You can't force them. But invite them. Because the day will come. You'll be standing before God alone. You will give an account of your season at Word and Spirit. And God says this morning, I don't even miss one tear. I don't miss one prayer. Check this out. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. I mean, as we pray, the, the, the heavenlies and heaven and the throne room of God is filled with prayer. It's like prayer senses being filled with the prayers of God's people. And now the Bible says our prayers and our tears are recorded in God's books. Now imagine you get to heaven. And there's like a book. Hermann Streidum. What? Look at this thick book. And the angel is opening the book. And this whole thick book is just prayers of Pastor Herman. And every tear is being recorded in that book. Heta, Teresa, Nitschke, Abby. Isn't this amazing? Some of you have never read this in your life. He doesn't lose one tear. He knows exactly how many tears you have cried in your lifetime. Sometimes we say things like, I've shed a lot of tears, you know, over my children. Okay, maybe that's true. But you don't even know how many. But imagine there's a book and all your prayers, thousands upon thousands of prayers, thousands upon thousands of tears are recorded in a book, in a bottle. Imagine how big that bottle must be. Some of you are crying you don't even have words. And I'm yet just to encourage you. God sees those tears as prayers. It's been recorded. It's all there. In a bottle, but also recorded in a book. And I said in the Afrikaans meeting, it was just humorously, but I suppose now there's like, Great IT systems in heaven, I think so. I don't know. Isn't that amazing? When I just think about my prayers as I pray on a daily basis, 
When I think about the prayers that we've prayed in this church over years, over decades. Now sometimes you, you would remember maybe a prayer of five years or ten years ago. You prayed for somebody, but you can't even remember the detail. But God says this morning, check this out, I am a God of detail. Your prayers, come on, your tears are recorded. Are you happy about that? It's important to God and he doesn't lose one of them. Malachi 3.16. I love this. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other and the Lord listened to what they said in his presence and then a scroll or a book a scroll of remembrance in those years they've used scrolls we don't use it anymore we use books but our young people don't even read books anymore they watch YouTube videos they read but they watch YouTube they read YouTube. Come on. They read Google. For some of you older people, yeah, Google is not the name of one of our brothers or sisters. It's internet. <laughs> They've been using scrolls in those days. And now the Bible says... God listened to them. And then there was a scroll of remembrance. This is profound. Was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of his name. Check this out. People who are praying are always thinking about him. Come on. People who are praying is always honoring God. Can you say amen? Amen. And the Bible says, those who fear me, those who are thinking about me, thinking about his people, his church, his kingdom. I have a book of remembrance. And the names of those people who fear me and who honor me, their names are written in that book. That's phenomenal. I'm so excited about the word. I'm preaching 30 years, but it's just getting better and better. I'm so excited. People who are praying are always busy honoring God. They're always busy fearing God. Not scared about Him. And scared for Him. No, no. You fear Him. You have reference for Him. You love him. You honor him. You have respect for him. What about my prayers? God can answer your prayer like this. And if it takes a bit longer, don't blame him. Because he knows better. I tell you what. God's timing is really perfect. Sometimes we don't feel like that. Come on, be honest now. Don't look so holy now. Sometimes you all also feel, you God, you're a bit slow now. Hmm? Some of you not being honest now. Hmm? But he knows better. And his timing is perfect. And are you ready now? I want you to take this. I'm about to close. I want to I tell you like the prophet told Hezekiah. After he prayed. After he turned to the wall. And he humbled himself. And he prayed earnestly. And he wept bitterly. And then the word of the Lord came to the prophet. Turn around. And go and tell the king. Thus saith the Lord. Are you ready? I'm prophesying this now over you. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Thus saith the Lord. Come on, take it by faith. I have heard your prayers and I have seen your tears. Come on! I will heal you and I will bless you. 
And the Bible says what? You can go and read it at home. The Bible says, and then the prophet said, God says, I will add 15 years to your life. And I feel to prophesy here. Come on, come on, come on. Some of you must jump up. I'm here to prophesy God will add years to your life. Come on, God will add favor and grace and blessing to your life. It doesn't matter what people think or say. You pray and you continue to pray and you continue to cry and you continue to seek the face of God. And even if you feel that your circumstances, you know, they don't change as quickly as you want them to change. But I want you to know God is busy working behind the scenes and your breakthrough is going to be tremendous. I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. God says, I don't miss one prayer. I don't miss one tear. I even have a bottle for all the tears of my people. It's even been recorded in my books. Every prayer, every tear is recorded in God's books. I mean, this is so amazing. I'm so excited. This is so phenomenal to know. Now you will pray like never before because now you see, I've shown you how God feels about prayer. You see, in the spiritual realm, something happens. It's so powerful. Even the dogs bark. Sometimes you get dogs that are more sensitive to the spiritual world to some Christians. As some Christians. Did you enjoy the word? Keep on praying. Keep on crying. Let me preach to myself. Let me preach to you. Sometimes when you feel like, God, where are you? When are you going to answer me? Remember this word. I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. I don't lose one of them. It's like incense to me. This blessed me so much. Teresa, you know that sometimes we cry so much when we pray. I think about a daddy and a mummy who's crying and crying. About, about the children and praying. And sometimes they feel God when and what. And, but God is in perfect control. A book of remembrance. Of every prayer. Every time when you fear God. When you honor Him. By coming to church. By giving the Lord's tithe. It's written. In his books. I can do a whole series on this. Everything that you do, it's written in a book. There are angels, and all they do is writing things in books. Every single thing. Let me close. Did you know that the Bible says there's a book of life? When you give your life to Jesus, your name has been written in the book of life. In Psalm 139, for those of you writing down, David says, there's a book with all the days of my life. Everything has been written in that book. Another book. Go and, go and, go and read that psalm for yourself. He has many books. There's the Bible book with 66 books in the Bible. But then the Word of God says, God has many books. Book of remembrance. A book of life. David says, even before I was formed in the womb of my mom, 
He says, your eyes were watching me. And everything concerning my life, check this out. The time when we are born, the time when we are about to die, and everything between that is written in a book. That's another book. Is it possible that even before you were born, that God knew everything about you? Yes, He does. And that's why we need to take stand when it comes to life. And Pastor Henry takes stand when it comes to life. We are not for abortion. Some of these guys, they have become mad. You can't kill an animal, but you can kill a baby. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? You can't shoot a buck. You know, an animal. Just don't kill an elephant. Why not? You don't want me to go there now. If they don't kill the, the, the elephants, by the way, I spoke to a, a farmer just the other day. The problem even right now in the, in the Kruger Park is there's too many elephants. They eat all the trees. Then there's not enough food for the birds, so the birds leave. There's not enough food for some of the other animals. I'm just mentioning. We all eat meat and we like biltong, but you don't like the shooting of the animal. I, I also don't like that. Why do I mention this? Because you get people, they're against shooting an animal, but they are for abortion. Crazy. David says, even before I was formed, now they, they are willing to kill babies up to nine months. A baby, a human being. David says, even before I was formed, God knew me. And then, everything about my life, come on, was written in this book of God. Just to give you perspective. If you don't like the shooting, that's okay. Just enjoy the bolt. But let's stand up as the church and say, Enough! You see, I'm a voice. We are totally against abortion. Can you say amen? amen. Did you enjoy the words? Amen. Come on, let's stand. Come on, give Jesus praise. Come on, give Him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All your tears, all your prayers are recorded. I just feel to prophesy to someone, there's more than one person in this audience this morning. You were told that you were a mistake. In other words, your dad and mom didn't plan you you know you just happen to be there that's why the marriage and sex is actually so sacred it's from God God made it that's why you don't sleep around you only sleep with the person you are married to now it's very quiet yeah I'm here to prophesy that God says, you were never, never a mistake. Because even before you were formed, even before, check this out, as I prophesy, as I go way back in some of your lives, even before they thought about doing something that they was not supposed to do, 
God knew about you. Even before you were formed in your mom, God says, I have written everything concerning you in one of my books. So that means you are important and you are important to God. And it doesn't matter what people think or say. Your prayers, your tears are important. Continue to pray. Continue to seek His face. I'm going to ask my wife to end this meeting by praying. And she can take up the offering as well. Come and bless the people. Just before we end our Facebook live. Come and just pray as, as the people heard this wonderful word. Bless them this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, powerful word that we heard this morning. Thank you so much that we know that you hear all our prayers and see all our tears. Thank you for catching each and every one of them. Thank you for writing everything down in your books of remembrance. That is astonishing just to think about it, Lord. We appreciate it so much. And it opened up a whole new world for us to even pray and cry more. Because you are the only answer of our prayers. So thank you for each and every one this morning that's here, Lord that's been lifted up, built up by your word of encouragement again, to pray again, to seek you again, to cry again over that boy or girl or family member or situation at work, your finances. You may pray and cry again because God is about to answer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may I prophesy acceleration over the answering of your prayers. May I say it in Jesus' mighty name. That there will be an acceleration over that. In Jesus' name. May you see even with your own eyes how the Lord is about to work things on your behalf. For your good, for your family's good, in the mighty name of Jesus, because it's all for his glory. We cannot do anything about it, but God is about to interact and accelerate what you have prayed for. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for even blessing these finances this morning, every person that's giving this morning, may you be blessed by our, by our Father that's in heaven. And also that piece, um, that part that Pastor Henry talked about in Malachi 3, it mentions the heavenlies are open above you when we give. And I pray that over these precious people, over your precious people, that your heavenlies are open above them in the mighty name of Jesus. And we glorify you, we honor you, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.